of the Maris Mose training and we are going to as my note said we're going to move in deeper into the Maris Mose process amen so let us pray father we bless you and thank you so very much for this time I'm asking for the spirit of the living God by way of the word of God to now separate the pieces Lord help us to understand how to advance in you that we might live the life that you have predetermined before the foundation of the world that we should live we're so excited about you we're excited about all that you're showing us Lord we say yes and amen Lord we submit our souls to your spirit now in Jesus name touch us transform us go deep in us to show us who we really are so that we can become who you want us to be. We give you praise and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome everyone by way of live stream. Welcome everyone by way of Facebook and, and YouTube and whatever medium you're looking at this. Thank you so much for being with us. On our website, on our website, on BethelOIC.Church, you can go to the website under the media tab and you can find Marriage Most Training and you can find Checkup 2. You can find checkup one there as well. If you didn't do the first checkup, so checkup two. If you didn't do one, you need to do one. But we're on two, and we're going to go through that um, tonight, okay? We're going to go through that checkup tonight. You need a, a, a paper there. Um, they'll give you one. Um, so let's go through the foundational passage of Scripture um, for the checkup as it is. Psalms 142 and 7, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. All of that happens when my soul comes out of prison. Okay, my soul is taken out of prison. And the prison that my soul is taken out of is myself. It is not a physical prison that we're talking about the prison of our own lives so um, it says answer the second set of questions that follow to to see continue uh, to follow to see continue on your journey to see how your soul lines up remember thou shall not lie to thyself um, the 11th commandment again is thou shall not lie to thyself okay very important okay so the first question is what are your top three ambitions what are your top three ambitions okay just just basically write those down what are your top three ambitions again if you do not have this and you most likely don't go to our website at bethelOIC.church and you can download this right there or you can follow along so you can then fill it in later but you need to fill in each one of these checkups every week there's a new checkup so there's one more checkup coming and that will be next Tuesday okay so the second question what is your preferred type of music what I want you to also know and you'll find out tonight is that everything about your soul is not bad okay and I don't want you to get that mindset that my soul is a horrible place because God made it for his own good pleasure all right and there are there are things that you can still use of the old data as well and we'll go through that the old data can be used um, but for God if God wants to and that's the other that's the very important part if God wants to okay not because it's there all right so what kind of music do you like okay all specific genres um, most all types all types none some people don't like music at all okay um, there are people there are people that really don't get along and don't like music they just don't just don't do it um, you know and that's all right you know I, I'm one that pretty much I can probably put down all types okay um, um, what kind of sense of humor do you have this is really interesting. Is it dry? Is it witty? Improv improv improvisational, which the improv and um, you see Wayne Brady them on doing 
their improv thing and um, what is that called? I forgot. Whose line is it, right? Whose line is it? Improv, improv and improvisational. Um, slapstick. Slapstick comedy means you like seeing people fall down, um, get hit in the head. That is the Three Stooges, if you remember. That kind of, um, for the old folk, that was that. And that's being slimed on the show. What's the, other, what's the show you get slimed on? Um, Nickelodeon, yeah, that's slapstick um, kind of comedy or self-defecating um, you like to you like to make jokes about yourself you and it's most people like to do that so that nobody else will do it they, they, they say something about themselves before somebody get a chance to say it about them you have been around those people okay interesting aren't they name your strongest character trait what would you think what would you say your strongest character trait is Think about that for a moment. Think about that, okay? How, how would you do that? Then, on top of that, what is your weakest character trait? And don't make your weakest character trait your a strength, uh, which you should do when you're having an interview. When they're having an interview, they want to know your weakest character trait, make it a strength, even though it's a weakness. Okay, but this time, you're going to tell yourself the truth. Okay? My biggest character trait is come on making you think isn't it yeah. look I see the smoke the smoke coming from your ears <laughs> see the other one was smacking you upside the head this one making you dive in a little deeper to think about yourself a little bit more some things you don't even think about right do you cut people off while they're talking yes. write it down I like this question right here. Are you annoyed easily? I like that question. Are you annoyed easily? And number eight is what annoys you? And there may be more than one. What annoys you? What really annoys you? Do people on the road cutting you off annoy you? Do people that talk too much annoy you? Do, okay, people, come on. What annoys you? Come on. All right, what annoys you? Write it down. Now you got to ask yourself, why does it annoy you? Not only what annoys you, but why does it annoy you? What, what about it annoys you? What makes you annoyed by the fact that it, it happened? So, are you annoyed easily? What annoys you? And then why does it? And that's the deep part of thinking about it. What makes your soul annoyed by it? Okay? What makes your soul annoyed by it? She's got the checkup for you, bro. Um, number 10 says, when you use an item, do you quickly return it to its proper place? Do you return the things you use to its proper place? Or do you, when you use them, do you leave them on the counter? Do you leave them on the dresser? Do you, do, that's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Do you, do you put your stuff back? Um, uh, you, is your stuff all over the place? When you take it out, it's out. Or do you put it back where it belongs? Your counter stay clean. Amen. Ain't nobody helping. <laughs> Lord. Live stream, I wish you could be in the house and just feel the house. It's really interesting. Number 11. Name three things you have done the same way most of your life, other than personal hygiene and diet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than personal hygiene and diet, I knew that's where you would probably go. But three things that you do all the, you do the same. You've been doing it the same your whole life. Your whole life. You thinking, there's smoke coming out of your ears. Come on. What is it that you do? You do it the same way over and over and over all the time. Saying you ain't have a one. You think about one? Come on. You got three. You got three. I promise you, you got three. You got three. If you can think of one, give me one for now. Say, so what do I do the same over and over and over? I tell you how you can find out this really easy. Ask somebody close to you. 
they'll tell you <laughs> they'll tell you something you do over and over the same way they'll let you know they'll let you know if they're honest with you now that's the that's the piece if they are honest with you glory to god see my wife would tell me and this is interesting my wife would say you don't close the cabinets that's you too she said, say, you open the cabinet and you leave the cabinet open. You won't close the cabinet. My sister comes back and says, slam. She always fussing me about that. All right, I've been doing that my, my whole life. Leave it right open. I open that dinner and it needs to be stayed open. So. <laughs> that's right Le that's right some people leave lights on been leaving lights on their whole life go in the room turn the light on and it, it, the off switch don't work it don't it go on but it don't ever come off come on so what do you do the same now okay you need three what do you fear most what do you fear most okay write it down now the question is, you go deeper and go, why do you fear the above? Why do you fear it? This, I fear this thing, but why do I fear it? It's, that's the deep part. That's the marismos. The marismos is asking why I do what I do, okay? Doing what I do is acknowledging it, but the marismos is dealing with why. Everybody good? <laughs> 14 do you know how to follow okay number 15 who do you follow other than the Godhead don't put Jesus <laughs> don't you dare put Jesus down there uh -uh. who do you follow do you know how to follow and who do you follow Okay. I could have asked the question, do they know you're following them? And I'm not talking about Facebook either. I'm not talking about Facebook, Twitter, or anything. That ain't following. See, we have, we have messed up a whole generation to make them think they're following somebody. No, following me, you are, you, you, <laughs> you're close enough that they know you're following. Come on, right? And who can tell you no and you don't push back against? Who can tell you no and they, watch this, I could have put this in there, and they don't explain themselves. Who can tell you no and they don't explain yourself and you just do it? You stop when they tell you no. <laughs> no pushback, nothing. And they said, you ask them, they said no, and you said, okay, that's the end of that for me. Do you have anybody like that? Remember, I tell women all the time, don't marry a man that doesn't have another man in his life who can tell him no. <laughs> don't marry that dude. Don't marry that dude because that dude is going to be out of hand in your life because men tend to not listen to women. Even wives. Huh? They, they, yeah, they, they are because I don't want you to go God here, Jesus, Lord, spiritual. Mm -mm. You, you, you could literally actually put me in that category if you wanted to because I, I fit that. But the question is, can I tell you no? And you do it. Mm. Other than Chanel, and she don't listen either. Okay. <laughs> Verse seventeen. Are you bossy? <laughs> Are you bossy? Live stream, they're having problems in with my questions. Live stream, I'm just trying to tell you, they're having problems with my questions. I hope you are not having the same kind of problems with my questions. These are not bad questions, live stream. Okay. <laughs> are you bossy? I sh my question, follow up to that that I didn't put here is, why are you bossy? Why are you bossy? And a lot of times that could have to do with your parents and your parents were bossy and 
You just want your way. You just want things the way you want them to be. Yeah, and um, you just think you're right all the time. You just think you're right all the time. You used to being in charge, but that's still you're still bossy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you a planner are you a planner do you plan out come on I could have gone another step with you <laughs> the next step is do you annoy people with your planning yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know people just say Lord Jesus can you have some spontaneousness which is the next question are you spontaneous yeah. okay which which one are you are you more spontaneous or are you more of a planner yeah. can, you can be both you can you actually can have both you can be a planner and spontaneous most people aren't Okay. Interesting. Most people are. Most people are either that that's that that thing is either one way or another. That that teeter totter is up or down. Okay. Most people are not balancing that planning and spontaneous stuff. Okay. Huh? I hope I help you to be more spontaneous. I'm glad I did. But my wife's well, I'm not at all spontaneous. She says you are too rigid. Now my wife is totally. My wife is totally spontaneous. But see, I know what you're talking about, but when it comes down to you know, Yeah, other things I'm spontaneous about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be I I can be spontaneous about music and singing and and I might go, okay, do this. And you go, We ain't practice that. So what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if you can practice it, sing it, let's go. <laughs> that's in so that's the areas I have some spontaneity, but I don't have spontaneity in a lot of things. So if we're on vacation, I'm not stopping to see every little lookout. Oh, but you should. I know, see, I should. No. But if it was planned, I might stop to see the lookout, but it won't plan. So we go into our destination. <laughs> and so she, she if she's driving, I'm stopping every five minutes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't let her drive, and I drive Miss Daisy. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Our soul's getting saved, amen. All right, number 20. Are you um, obsessive about anything? Are you obsessive? Are you, come on, are you obsessive about washing your hands or anything such as that? It can be as small as that. You got to do it. You Come on. Some people are neat obsessive. Okay? Things got to be neat or it doesn't work for them. Okay? Are you just a little prejudiced? <laughs> are you just a little prejudiced? Do you See, notice I didn't ask you are you prejudiced? <laughs> I asked you do you have a little prejudice in you? Have you ever have you found yourself just a little prejudiced? Okay? Okay? Looking yourself in the face, aren't you? Yeah. Not, not lying to yourself, right? Okay. Do you dream in black or white or color? Yeah. <laughs> you, you dream HD 4K, Jesus. <laughs> My Lord, live stream. My goodness. How do you dream? You say, all this have to do with my soul? Everything on this sheet has to do with your soul. Everything has to do with your soul. Come on. Are you a, are you a careful person? Are you careful? Okay, you try to be? Are you reckless? How do you drive? Do you cut in and out of traffic? Do you, are you reckless? Are you, do you drive over the speed limit? Are you, do you drive over the speed limit? Then you're reckless. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Are you organized? In some areas, they said. Are you organized? How, how does your um, spice cabinet look? Ladies. How does your um, sock drawer look, men? 
Are you organized? Are you organized? How does your pantry look, ladies? Are you organized? Men, how do your trunk look? <laughs> come on. Amen. And that's why the next question comes, are you messy? Are you messy? Can I find the last three items you wore laying on a chair somewhere? Anybody? Anybody? Can I find the last three items you wore laying on a chair somewhere? Do you just throw them in? Do you just throw your clothes in the floor? Okay. <laughs> Where's the towel you use to dry off? Do you make your bed? <laughs> Jesus name. Messy. Do you think about me <laughs> think about messy people if you are organized? What do you think about messy people if you're an organized person? What do you think about those people? And then vice versa, what do you think about organized people if you're messy? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about it? What do you think about those people? If you are organized, what do you think about that messy person when you see them messy out there? Life all messy, out of, all jacked up. Matter of fact, in the black community now, it's interesting too, in the black community, we now have decided to go natural. Natural does not mean nappy. And natural does not mean not combed. Natural doesn't mean not combed, no product in it. Natural don't mean that it looked like you just came out of the Sahara Desert. That's not, not that's not what natural means. I know that's what you think it might mean, but that's not what it means. It don't mean don't comb your hair. It don't mean matted. It don't mean matted. If it's all matted, that ain't natural. That's messy. And it's evolved. Yeah. Because that's what it was used to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Name three of your hobbies. What are your hobbies? <laughs> Name three of your hobbies. What are your hobbies? Name them. Number 30. That's, thir that's 29. Number 30. What projects have you started but haven't finished? What projects have you started but haven't finished? And the last one, did you answer all of the questions truthfully? Did you answer all of the questions truthfully? Notice the last one on the other one was, did you follow instructions? Yeah. Reasons for these. So live stream, thank you for taking the test. If you didn't, if you didn't take the test and you don't know where to find it, go to Bethel, oic.church. And you go, click on our media tab and you can download checkup one and checkup two. Now, this is the second checkup. There will be a checkup three that you'll get next Tuesday. We'll not get there until next Tuesday. So don't go there looking for it beforehand. All right. God bless you. Thank you. All right. So, all right. So let's go deeper. Y'all ready? Okay. As, um, as I indicated on Sunday, I will cover some of the same ground over and over again um, until they become a principle in our life, okay? So, so don't get upset with me because I'm telling you the same things over, but we've got to have them over and over until they become principle. So it is time, um, um, <laughs> every time, each time, and every time we go through the same thing, my hope is that it's going deeper so that it can become manifestation more than revelation. Okay, got it? But you're here to learn, not just for yourself, who you, come on, help me. You're here to learn for, to train others. So you're trying to get this information so that you can give it out, okay? But you're going to give it out once you have, come on, we have fruit in our life, not just toot. We don't want to just be able to talk about it. We want to be able to show them these are the things that I've changed in my life. My wife is on this program right now that really, and some of you have seen her, she's on this program that is causing her to lose weight. The, 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 um, it's a real serious program, and people lose weight within the first week and all that. And one of the things they tell them to do is to put their pictures out on Facebook media and all those kind of things. The reason for that is when somebody see that you have done a thing, now they want to know how did you accomplish the thing. That's fruit. That's fruit. It's one thing to say I'm going to lose weight and, and you stay as big as a house. 
but not, it's, it's true when I say I'm going to lose weight and I lose weight and then I can show you all of the evidence of my weight loss. Very important. That's very, very important. It's one, so, so, so you got to have fruit and if you don't have no fruit, don't tell anybody until you have some fruit. Amen? Alright, foundational scriptures guys, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder, which is the word marismos, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The other foundation of scripture is Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so here we are doing the Marismos training. Again, the Greek word Marismos is divide asunder. So if we what what it is saying that's going to do the Marismos? It's the word of God that is performing the task um, as a two-edged sword. It is the word of God, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, and it's piercing. Okay, so the word of God is doing all of that, which we could really do an entire teaching on the the functionality of the word of God as it is quick or living powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, and piercing. So we could literally talk about those, all of those parts of the Word of God, but that's what the Word is doing, and the Word is the very thing that is helping us to get to where we want to get to. Therefore, we can clearly say it this way. We can say it this way. Um, if we have a regular diet of the Word of God, if we have a regular diet of the Word of God, then our souls and spirit will be placed in proper working order. That Can, can you agree with that? Yes. Saint and James said it this way as we look at James said in verse 1 um, chapter 1 verse 21 he says wherefore lay, ap lay aside or wherefore ap um, apart all what filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness and receive with meekness what did he say the engrafted word which is able to do what it is able to save your soul. So now, if we're in the Word of God, a special, a continual diet of the Word of God, then we know that the Word is going to do its part to save our soul. The Word is doing its part. Matter of fact, we could then, what, what did we do? We connected some dots. What we do? We said, so how do you get this Word? By faith. So what we say, Romans 10 and 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. So now you got the word of God that's bringing faith, but we also got the word of God that's saving my soul. And then we can say receiving the end of your faith. What is the end of your faith? Which the word of God is producing. What's the end of my faith? Even the salvation of your soul. So now the salvation of my soul is, by, is the end of my faith, but faith is produced by the word and the word engrafted saves my soul as well. That's interesting, isn't it? Amen. Come on, come on. That's the connection. That's some of the stuff I told you to do <laughs> last week. And I don't know if you connected those those dots. But And you could take it further. You could keep connecting those dots that way. How the word and faith saves the soul. How the soul works together. You can put more there. I walk by faith, not by sight. And sight has a soulical relationship. My sight and my soul is relation. So I walk by faith. I'm not walking by sight. Because the word has produced faith and the faith is saving my soul because the word has been engrafted into me. Did you, did you catch all that? Okay, you see? So um, we see there are two salvations. That's very important. Two salvations. What? The spiritual salvation. You have spiritual salvation and you have what? Soul salvation. And the soul salvation is different than the spiritual salvation. The spiritual salvation is being born again. That's the spirit man that comes and take up residence in the house. We will talk about him more, um, a little bit more in a, in a moment. But then the soul was still there, and that soul now needs to be molded and shaped and dealt with. So Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says what? Um, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by what? The mercies of God that you do what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed. 
by what? The renewing of your mind. Now that is the soul part because your soul is comprised comprised of what? Three parts: your mind, your will, and your emotion. So these are the three parts of your soul. So if I'm transforming my mind, then my soul is. That's the process of transforming my soul as well. So this is this transformation of the of the mind. This transformation of my soul. That is the work of the spirit man that has come into the house. That is, listen, listen really good because this is really important. That is not God's work. That's your work. God's not doing that for you. He's not doing that for you. He's not doing that for you. Not doing that for you. You won't, you'll find out next week. Even, even dealing in, in, in the last night, which will be, woo. I'm just telling you, the very last night, woo, Jesus, okay, oh my father. But we'll find out that Jesus had the same problem. We're going to go in there deep and deal with Jesus, dealing with the same problem in himself, okay, amen. And so we had to transform that soul. That soul has to come into alignment. Now, again, that takes work. That takes work. And that's why I believe also, and we'll deal with it even more, why the Holy Spirit was sent to help you to do this work. It's, let, let me tell you something. Watch this. It's easy to save spirits. <laughs> All I got to do is get them to say a prayer. They say one prayer. I can take them Romans 9, 10... Romans, Romans nine, Romans ten, verse nine and ten, and then I can get them to come, 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 confess that with me, and they saved. Come on, is that right? Yes. Come on, talk to me. Yes. Is it anything else they need to do to get saved? No, not a thing. I don't care how much they tell you. you got to go get baptized. That ain't true. <laughs> come on, you got all you got to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you did it at the bus stop, you saved at the bus stop. You ain't get dunked in no water yet. Okay? Okay? Now, so the deal is, watch this now. I want you to understand. So that's easy. But the Bible didn't tell us, and we, we may even go through that again. But what? Is that just, he who saves souls is what? Wise. Wise. That's a process. That's a process. And we will, I think I'm going to get through most of that tonight. I'm believing God. I, get, I see. Lord, help me. So the man's primary assignment is to deal with the old information accumulated by the old man, the old soul that happened from your birth. Yes. You got to deal with everything from your birth. So your, your new man is dealing with everything about you that comes from your birth. It's dealing with all of your culture. It's dealing with everything you've learned from your culture. Everything. Is, is dealing with everything you learn from the rearing of your parents, good or bad, is learning it. It's, it's, it's learned all of that. It's learned all of the violations by people in your life, good or bad. It's learned that. And believe me, it will hold on to those violations and bring them up at the proper time um, to now hurt you or to keep you from functioning in the way you need to. Okay, am I, am I talking to the right people? Okay, all of that kind of stuff. Whenever you've gotten injured, hurt, whatever, it's there, and that information is there. And when the new man comes, he has to deal with it. He has to deal with it. So all of your experiences, everything you experience. One of the, um, there was a movie called Lucy, I believe, if you guys remember. Uh -huh. So Lucy, one of the things that's interesting, as she had taken this pill and all of that, or this drug, and, and drugs was inside of her, and the drugs exploded and all that, and she became this super... Um, mental person that these drugs was to make you hyper in your in your thinking one of the things she said to her mother which was interesting at the end and near the time that she was transitioning to whatever she transitioned to so it was just a weird ending but bless the lord for it okay but that that's hollywood but what lucy said was this lucy said i can feel she says, I can feel your kisses on my cheek when I was in the crib. So that meant that that was true because everything that has ever happened to you, even the things you don't remember, 
is stored in your soul. Wow. Amen. Every hug. Now I remember most of my whoopings. <laughs> it's something about the soul that can bring a whooping up real easy. A whooping can come right up, and 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 I can remember most of them whooping. Okay. But 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 the kiss to somebody or the handshake when I was a child or you don't or the pat on the head or you don't remember that but it's there. All of that information is still there. And it's interesting that the soul can bring it up if it wants to. Okay? Which is another reason, and again, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself in some of this, but watch this. Which is the reason why you don't allow anybody to hypnotize you. You do not go under hypnosis for any reason at all. You do not give them your mind. You don't allow them to have control of your mind. And I'm not, to, I don't care what kind of hypnosis it is. No good hypnosis at all. Don't give them your mind. Your will and your emotions don't belong to them. And I ain't have nobody on those stage have me rugging around clucking like no chicken. <laughs> Every time I hear a bell, I'm clucking like a chicken. I'm not going to be doing that because he might not take it off well. <laughs> so if he don't take it off well and I'm in the supermarket and they ring the ching ching and I, <laughs> and, and I can't get out of it now. <laughs> now I'm stuck as a chicken and we got to find him to try to get me out of it. And I'm clucking all day. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Deuces. Be all on YouTube, be all on Facebook, be gone viral for the wrong reasons, right? All right, so then to help men, watch this, then to help men to understand that they too can experience this amazing new birth by accepting the finished works of Jesus by death, burial, and resurrection, God sent his son. He sent the Holy Spirit so that we could be saved and so that man would know that he could live in this new place. Understand that God made the soul, this is what I want you to get tonight, that God made the soul and he wants each soul to experience greatness under the government of the spirit okay again he's not offended by your soul because God made it and you can't be offended by your soul make sure you get this tonight this is really important also understand that your soul isn't an enemy it's not an enemy okay even though it can become one <laughs> through independent lifestyle Okay, but it's but it's not an enemy. It is something. It is precious, isn't it? Yeah. I said it is precious. How do I know that? Matthew chapter sixteen, verse twenty-six says, "For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul?" Same thing can found in Mark eight twenty thirty-six and Luke nine and twenty-five. So here. Jesus is clearly telling us that the soul is more valuable than the entire world and everything in it. And you got to meditate on that. And I, I've said that to you many times, but I don't know if you meditated on that. You got to think about all that we would like to have in the earth. And your soul is greater than it. There is nothing. Come on. So uh, the enemy tries to fool us by offering us fame and fortune. Okay. So his invitation of fame and fortune is to remove you from the understanding that you have the most valuable thing in the universe. That God has breathed individual life into you and you became an independent lifestyle or a living soul, goodness, with uniqueness and personality that God loves and going to use to do great things through. And you don't know how valuable it is. You think it can be sold for a million dollars. See, so watch this. I want you to think about this. That if you, you, you've heard the devil tell you this in movies, he's, what, you've heard people say, sell me your what? No. Say it loud, sell me your what? He don't say your spirit. He don't say sell me your spirit. He says give me your soul. 
So he's after the soul of man. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. That's what he wants. He wants your soul. Because it's through your soul that he can now do what he needs to do. And that's the creativity that you have. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. The reason why the angels desire to look into what we have is because they don't have what we have. They, they look into it because it's so amazing to them that God would give this to us. Hello. Which makes us like God. <laughs> I'm going to make you in the likeness and the image. Come on. Never did he say that to the angels. Hebrews said he never said that. Even when he's when it's talking about Jesus, never did he say to the angels, sit at my right hand. But he never said to the angels, I'm going to make you in my likeness and image. <laughs> you made in the likeness and image of Almighty God. Therefore, you have what God has. When God says, my soul will not strive with man always. Wow, so God has a soul? <laughs> and you have a soul. And God loves the fact that you have a soul. Breathe into your nostrils the breath of life. And you became a living snafesh soul. That's serious. But you think there, you can transfer it or you can give something or you can get something that's greater than your soul. If you gain the whole world, Jesus said it doesn't even compare to one soul. Not one soul. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes, Glory to God. We're not in there yet, but it's serious here. This is serious. And, 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 and once we understand this, then we will understand the temptation. We'll understand the temptation. The enemy didn't do anything. He doesn't do anything just by happenstance. Everything, he's got some little scheme to it. Matter of fact, wit, witty, uh, methods, whatever. He's got something coming at you. Okay, so look at what, look at what Jesus, look what he does to Jesus. Um, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4. He tries this on the marriage most man. Now, so I want you to think about this. The enemy is going to try this on the word itself. <laughs> he, knows, he knows who he's dealing with. He's going to try this on the word himself. Watch this now. Watch this. In verse 5, he said, And the devil takes Jesus up into a high mountain, show him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Show him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So now, what is he? Listen to what he's doing now. He shows him everything in the kingdom. You got to hear me. He shows him all of the kingdoms. <laughs> All of them. So he basically showing him what? The whole world. The whole world. He says, he shows him that in a moment of time. And the devil says unto Jesus, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. Did Adam deliver it unto him? I said, did Adam deliver it unto him? Did he take it from Adam? Did he steal it from Adam? Then why are we sing that song? Go to the enemy's camp to take back what the enemy stole from me. Why do we sing that song? Because we don't understand spiritually that the enemy ain't steal nothing. When you understand he ain't steal nothing, you now know how to fight. He ain't steal nothing, you can't. Because when you go to him talking about you stole something, he said, I ain't steal a thing. You don't have no rights here because I was given this. All of the authority, all of his glory was given to me. Adam gave it to me. It's mine. He's flaunting it, isn't he? Come on. He's flaunting it in the face of the most man. <laughs> he's flaunting it in the face of the word, the, the son of God. He's flaunting it. Oh, it's all delivered to me. I give it to whosoever I will. You got to hear that as well. You got to hear that as well. What is he given? What is he given? He's giving them whatever they want. To what, to what part of them is he giving it? To their soul. Because it's in their soul that they are being satisfied with what's being given. Yes. Which is why I asked you in the first checkup how you feel when you get a lot of money or when you get money. <laughs> 
Are you happy when you get money? Are you sad when you don't have it? Then you are set up to be taken advantage of. Because the enemy says, okay, okay, I'll give you as much money as you want. You just serve me. Now watch this. He will not tell you to serve him. He'll tell you only all he needs you to do is not serve God. <laughs> he doesn't need you to say, look, you need to serve me. He says, no, I don't need to tell you that. Just don't serve God. Because when you separate from God, you're in the sin, aren't you? <laughs> and so I can leave you there. I can leave you there. I don't have to mess with you no more. You will not have what you need. Am I, am I talking to the right people? Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man of God, can you adjust the heat down a little bit so that they won't faint on me? I appreciate that. Uh, Sheena loving it up there, but the rest of y'all probably get ready to fall over. Okay, come on. So, so whosoever I will, I give it. Now watch what he says. Watch what Jesus says. Now watch this. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get where? Get behind me, Satan, for it is written. No, why, why? Now, tell me, why did he go to it is written? You should be able to give me the answer. Speak loud, sir. Yes, sir. Hebrews 4 and 12. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any true sword. So was Jesus actually, watch now, check this out. Was Jesus actually dealing with the devil or was he marismosing his own soul? Come on, think about it. Because the offer has been given to his soul. Are you hearing me? Right. The offer is given to his soul. He's not fighting. He's not necessarily. He said, get behind me, Satan. The word, now let me go to the word. It is written. Yes. 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 <laughs> it is written. Are y'all with me here? Yes. It is written. My God. It is written. Come on. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou serve. Wait a minute. Didn't hear him offer. I didn't hear him say, well, I didn't go back further enough. Um, uh, but remember the enemy says I'll give you all this if you will bow down and worship me yeah. that's in verse 7 if thou will worship me all shall be thine okay and he marries most it y'all got this yeah. okay so so the enemy saying this watch now this is a false worship too because it's not a worship out of his spirit he's asking for he asking for this worship out of your soul. Yes. Which is called will worship. Mm -hmm. Y'all not hearing me here. Yes, sir. Paul says we do not give God will worship. He says we give him true worship. I'm a man, I'm preaching better than y'all responded. So I want you to do something for a moment. Would you think with me for a moment? Um, there are a lot of places here that the Bible tells us um, because because why Jesus says he says once he says thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and only him shall thy serve so that means Jesus was totally submitted to the Father okay is that right Jesus was so, totally submitted to the Father so I asked you in the in in the checkup who do you follow right okay all right so the question is okay let me man. Okay, let go to go to go to St. John. Go to St. John with me. I got so much, man. I, I, I Lord help me, help me, Jesus, please help me. So my question, watch this. Jesus had every time he asked, the enemy did anything, Jesus had a scripture for it, didn't he? My question to you. Are you dealing with your situations by way of scripture? Do you have a scripture for the situations that you're in? Do you have do you have a scripture? Come on, that that you can say to the enemy anytime something come up in you, you can say, "Get behind me." And I will not let that thought man be, be manifested in my mind, in my heart. And I quote this scripture. Do, do you have a scripture? Do you have a word? 
Come on, every time, it makes no difference, every time it happens, you, you quote that scripture. That's your scripture because it's, a, it's, direct, it's directly towards that situation. Come on, so that your soul doesn't think of anything else other than what you want it to think about by way of God. Man, I should be charging people for this. I really should. Come on, you got to get this, man. This is serious here. So, so again, you should have at least three. Notice that Jesus had three. Yes. Come on, you, oh man. Three is an important number. Jesus had three. You should have at least three. Watch, watch, watch. Go, go to St. John. Go to St. John chapter 8, verse 32. Let's look at this. Look at what the Bible says. This came up the other morning, and I want you all to have this as well. This came up in early morning prayer by way of, 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 of candy over there. But St. John chapter 8 verse 32 says And you shall know the truth And the truth shall Make you free Again, live stream Look at me, look at me live stream Look at me live stream If I had quoted that scripture And some of you may have even be, be reading it And still read it wrong And there are virgins that have it in it wrong That have the word set have the word set free. That's wrong. The reason why Jesus said make, he's dealing with your soul. It's not dealing with your spirit. He's dealing with your soul. The soul needs to be made free. Meaning there is a process of becoming free. Is setting the difference. And in, in the example I gave them the other morning is the difference is setting the table and making the china. Yes. That's, a two, that's two different things The china, if I'm going to set the table It's already made right. Hello somebody And I go set the china on the table But if I'm going to make the china That's a whole different process That, inc that includes what? Clay, fire, yeah. oven Come on, mold and work, sweat yeah. The making of the soul the, the truth makes you free Yes. Which which message again? Which can help some of you because some of you think because I read the scripture one time it should be happening in my life. Yes. Come on, somebody. We think that okay. I got, I read that. I read that once. I read that two times. That's what it ain't happening because you want it to be set free. Yes. You, you it ain't a setting free that's gonna happen. It's a making of yourself free. So you gotta constantly come back to that thing when it come again. I've gotta use that same truth against it. Yes. I've gotta. It's gonna make me free. It's making me free. I free the process of me being transformed. Transformation is a process. It is not an instantaneous. It's not a zapping you. It's not a putting oil on your head and praying over you and let you run off on your business and now you're gonna be free. That can happen every once in a while with God. He does that every once in a while so that you know he has the ability to do it, but he wants the process. The reason why you need the process is because you need other people to eat your say it loud. Fruit, 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 man. We need some fruit. Yes. And most of the body of Christ don't have no fruit. <laughs> okay, are y'all with me? Yes, so St. John chapter, chapter 8, come on, verse 36 says what? If the Son therefore shall what? What he make you free, you shall be what? Free. You free indeed. <laughs> now how many times again, how many times have you heard set? <laughs> How many times we say set? Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been hopping on that for. That's another one of my, 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 my golden calves. I try to kill every time I hear somebody say it. Candy ran into it the other morning. She, she, she ran right up into that wall, man. I said, let me fix this thing right here. But again, we get, we got, we got to understand. You got, you. This is a making. This process is making, and that's the thing that we don't want to happen to us is the making process. Yes. We don't want to go through it. Right. We don't want to go through it. We don't want to go through it. See? Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. Now watch. So the truth is the word, and the word is who? Jesus. So, man, we could connect this to faith come by hearing, hearing by the word. We could connect this in this in here is the process that happens based on the faith. Come on, saving my soul. That salvation of my soul is a process. So it's not, I did it last week, and I'm going to be better this week. 
I did. Come on. I might fall. Come on. Come on. You, many times we, we say this in such a celebratory way that we don't even think about what we say. But he said the righteous shall fall seven times. But get up again. We, we say it like, oh, glory to God. <laughs> Wait a minute. You ain't thinking about the seven times falling? Yeah. <laughs> he fell seven times. <laughs> I mean, he messed up seven times. So the process took that, that long. Wow. And they, they, what, when is what you, you still, and most people still, if I can tell them that, I can tell you that, and you know, you know what I'm about to say. And you don't, you still may not have gotten a revelation of that. The righteous fall seven times, but they get back up again. So when they get up after the seven times, they're at the, <laughs> they're at the new beginning. Y'all ain't y'all. When the, they're at the new beginning. They're at the day of the eighth time. They're at the new beginning. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Y'all, you, you, you're tracking? Yes. Yeah. Come on, come on. Stay with me. St. John chapter 1. Come on, let's go back here. St. John chapter 1, verse 17 says, For the law was given by Moses, but watch this. It says, Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Therefore, when your situation needs favor from God, <laughs> come on now, it is the word that comes. Why? Your, when your situation needs God's favor, what's that? Grace. So when your situation needs favor, you then have words that speak favor over my situation. When your situation needs truth, I've got words that speak truth over my situation. Come on, y'all. You got to hear me. And both of them, based on being the word, is doing the transformation that my soul needs. Goodness, great you're the light. I'm preaching better than y'all responding in here. I know y'all right now. I understand. Come on. Are you, are you getting this? Yes, sir. My Lord. So you say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it a favor situation or a true situation? You see, if it's truth, then I need to find truth to speak to error or to lie. Come on, you with me? If it's a lack situation, I need favor to speak to this situation. If I'm in lack or, come on, and all that, I need grace to speak to it. So I come into the throne of God boldly. Come on. To find grace and mercy and grace in time of need. So in my need, I need to find out which one I need. So that the word is now doing the work, not me. Amen. I'm not trying to figure this out on my own. I'm not trying to go through my willpower. I'm not trying to um, come up with a good idea. I don't need no good idea. I need word. Why? Because the word is quick and powerful. Sharper. Come on. I need word. I need word because the word, the engrafted word is able to save my soul. And at the moment you get to soul salvation in any area, breakthrough is there. You don't have to worry about the breakthrough because why? You're already living in it by the spirit. We'll see that ho hopefully. Come on. You're already living in it by the spirit. All you got to do is now live in it to manifest it in your soul and your body and then it becomes yours in the earth. There's nothing can stop you. Matter of fact, let's put it this way so you can understand. Every place you are prospering is places that your soul has already been married most. Yes. Every place you have victory is, every, is the places that your soul has been married most. Yes. Every place that you're struggling are places that your soul has not met the marriage most man and the word has not become truth to you in that. It, watch this, it, you know it by way of your understanding, but it has not become yours. Yes. Yes. Oh, the church bells because time to pray, right? Eight o'clock. So are you getting this? Yes, sir. This is serious right here. Because what I've just given you is the key to now running your life. 
Don't run your life by your ideas, by your creativity, by your... No, run your life by the word. Yes. Apply word to every area. Apply word, find word. Okay, I got this thing coming up. Okay, apply word to it. Yes. Come on, come on. I need a new job. Apply word to it. I need more money. Apply word to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm man. Because why? The only reason you don't have the things is because your soul is telling you why you can't. Right. Believe me, again, most of us, the, most of us that are lacking in any area, we're lacking from our parents and our grandparents and our par grandparents' parents. That's where our lack is coming from. Our lack is not necessarily coming from our life personally. Our lack is coming from the progression of their lives who told us, based on their living, that we couldn't have a thing or not. And it takes a lot to break through. <laughs> it takes a lot to break through that I'm in abundance when I've never seen abundance. When I've only seen lack. Come on, it takes. Come on, you have to. You have to deal with that. Will Smith in in uh, I forgot the name of the movie when he, him and his son was homeless and all that. See, y'all know them things, don't you? Y'all know them things. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He told his he told his son, "Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do anything." And he's homeless at the time. He says, "Not even me." Don't you let me tell you can't you can't do something. Don't ever take that. Don't listen to nobody tell you you can't do something. Man becomes one of the wealthiest men. Come on, in in the market and all that kind of stuff and all that kind of stuff while homeless. He was homeless, but he was never homeless. Yes. He didn't have nowhere to live, but he was never homeless. Yes. There are people that are homeless, they're not people that don't have nowhere to live. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> Glory to God. Lord. Just because I don't have no place to live don't mean I'm homeless. Yes. You better hear me. What did I tell you? Because homelessness happens in, mind. in your mind. I am never going to succumb to homelessness. I'm never going to succumb to the place that I don't have a place to live. I'm going to always, I'm going to get a place to live. I'm going to live. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because it is, it's a solical thing. Yes. You will not, you will not overtake me. So you will do what I say. Woo! Jesus walked the earth providing grace to those who didn't deserve it. And truth through the instructional teaching that provided insight for their living. So he did both. He gave grace to those that didn't deserve any of it. And he gave instructions and in, in truth to those that said, this is how you live this thing. The Beatitudes, all of the Beatitudes, it's nothing but instructional living. That's how you live this thing. This is how you live this. Just let me lay this out for you. This is how you live this. But let me heal you that you don't even deserve this healing. But let me give you this healing. Let me bless you. Let me take you to the next level in God. You see that? He was, the, he was grace and truth walking. So let's go back to Nicodemus for a moment. Y'all with me? Yes, Woo! Live stream. Say something out there. Come on. Come on. Stop being stunned. <laughs> come on. Come on. Nicodemus. Let's go back to Nicodemus. Sheena, pull up that um, clip for me. Is, you Okay. Um, St. John chapter 3 says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. We're going back to this story because it's really important. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from, um, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I, 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 listen, it is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Lord, help me to be able to do it. That Jesus does not respond to his accolades and 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 or 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 um, saying something nice about him, Jesus never responds. Never responds to it. Go right to the heart of the matter. Jesus then said unto him, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." He didn't say, "Thank you, Nicodemus." No. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say, I'm glad you recognize who I am, Nicodemus. No. Except you be born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. Look at this. Nicodemus said to him, see the whole, the whole conversation shifted. How can a man be born when he is old? 
Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is what? Help me. Flesh. And that which is born of spirit is what? Spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, yet you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell from whence it cometh or where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. We've been talking about you've been sent from heaven. You've been sent from heaven. Can't tell where you came from, how you got here, when you got You don't know how God did it. You just know you're here. Okay, right? Nicodemus answers in him, how can these things be? See, Nicodemus' questions has to do with earthly mindset. Has to do with the fact that, wait a minute, wait a minute, man. I'm already in the earth. You already in the earth. I've already been born. What are you talking about being born again? That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't match. Okay? Watch. Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou master of Israel, and know not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that which we know, and testify that which we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you have not believed, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Why did Jesus tell them earthly things? Why did he tell them earthly things? Because their soul should be able to understand earthly things. The reason why he spoke to them in parables is because their soul should be able to understand earthly things. We're going somewhere with this tonight. Hold it. And, but he said, I ain't tell, I'm not teaching you spiritual things. He said, if I taught you spiritual things, you could not even understand them. Because you're not understanding when I'm telling you earthly things. I'm talking to you about corn, and I'm talking to you about wheat in a field. I'm talking to you about, and you're not understanding that. So how are you going to understand if I tell you spiritual things? And you're teachers of Israel. Yes. Listen to this now. <laughs> he said, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he did what? Came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man um, shall be lifted, must be lifted up. Man, it's an amazing thing. I'm telling you one thing. The, the providence of God, the, the, the foreknowledge, the, the um, amazingness of God to have Moses, when they are being bit by a snake, to lift up a bronze snake. In the midst of the wilderness that was representing Jesus. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. And it's clear to me, without a shadow of a doubt, that he that this bronze snake was not just on a stick, but on a cross. Why is that so clear to me? Because the Hippocratical oath shows the same symbol. Come on, a snake on the cross is the symbol for doctors. <laughs> Come on, y'all with me? The same snake that healed them. And look at what he said. All they had to do was lift it up. And all they had to do was do what? Look on it. They didn't even have to touch it. They didn't have to, nobody had to come and put their hands on them. All they had to do was look at it and they were healed from the venomous snake. Matter of fact, so what is, listen, what is he telling you, man? What are you telling you? That this cross that Jesus is on that has saved you, that that snake, that enemy, that evil snake that could destroy your life is destroyed and every bite from him is now destroyed out of your life just by by you looking on him once. If I be lifted up, I, glory to God, I will draw all men unto me. All I got to do is be lifted up and your life is going to be changed based on the fact that I be lifted up from the earth. Hallelujah. Where is the snake bite? The snake bite is not there, not your flesh. The snake bite is your soul. Because the enemy has worked with your soul since your birth because it was you didn't have anything else but it. And God says, by me being lifted up in my blood, it totally defeats the enemy. That's why hell doesn't have any place in you anymore. That's why you don't have anything that can hinder you from accomplishing anything in the earth but you. There is nothing in between you and God but you. Come on, you got to get that. Because we still got hell in between us. Hell ain't in between you. Hell doesn't have any place in your life. 
Y'all don't have to rebuke you. Wow. Why? We read it and we may read it again. Come on, what? Submit yourself to God. Yes, Lord. And the devil will flee from you. Yes. Oh, my Lord. Jesus. Where are the submitting Christians? Where are they? Where are those that are submitting to the king? Give me your whole life over. Give me your whole life over. Come on, somebody. Am I, am I talking to the right people here? Yes. Okay, now listen to this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this clip. The chosen, the chosen, um, the app, the chosen, if you haven't downloaded, I would recommend for everybody that's listening, go download the chosen app um, and look at season one of the chosen. Tremendous Bible um, teaching, but tremendous videos, um, um, short films, tremendous, um, great writing. Um, but I have looked at this particular scene, I know 10 times if I look at one. And I'm trying to tell you, I, I don't know, it, I, I told them, I told my wife and them the other morning, I said, every time I'm in here sniffling and crying. Yes. Because I want you to see the power of this relationship that Jesus had with Nicodemus here in this conversation. I want you to see it, it's so powerful. It takes about 10 minutes, so stay with me live stream, I'm not finished, but you got to get this. Go ahead, Sheena, turn those lights off, let's, let's look at this. start I have so many questions I shall we sit first oh yes of course the eastern slums hmm. many wandering preachers have succeeded in gathering crowds but their rhetoric and fiery tone I've heard a few of them over the years myself. So you know the type. Mm -hmm. But I have never heard anyone tell a paralytic to get up and walk, much less it actually happened. So what is your conclusion? I believe you are not acting alone. No one can do these signs you do without having God in him. Only someone who has come from God. And how is that belief going over in the synagogue? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we are here at this hour. What else? What have you come here to show us? A kingdom. That is what our rulers are worried about. No, not that kind. Then what? A sort of kingdom that a person cannot see unless he is born again. Born again? Yes. You mean like a new creature? A conversion from Gentile to Jewish? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Then what is born again? I hope you don't mean return to the womb, because that would be a problem for me. My mother, may she rest in peace, is dead. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That part of you, that is what must be reborn to a new life. How can these things be? Ah, a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things. Huh? I'm trying, Rabbi. I know. I know. Do you hear this? What? Listen. What do you hear? The wind. How do you know it's the wind? Because I can feel it. I hear its sound. Do you know where it comes from? No. Do you know where it's going? No. That's what it is to be born again of the Spirit. The 
spirit may work in a way that is a mystery to you. And while you cannot see the spirit, you can recognize his effect. Mind is consumed with thoughts of what a stir these words would cause among the teachers of the law. Yes, and I do not expect otherwise. I speak of what I know and have seen, and it has not been received by the religious leaders. It is hard to receive. So if I have told you of earthly things, and you do not believe, how can I tell you heavenly things? I believe your words. I just fear you may not have a chance to speak many more of them before you are silenced. I have come to do more than speak words, Nicodemus. More miracles? Yes. But even more than that. Do you remember when the children of Israel complained against God and against Moses in the wilderness of Paran? Yes. They wanted to return to Egypt and they cursed the manna that God sent them. And then? They were bitten by serpents and they were dying. But, but God made a way for them to be healed. Moses lifted the bronze serpent in the desert and people only needed to look at it. So will the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Our people are not dying from snake bites. They're dying from taxation and oppression. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I did not come to deliver the people from Rome. Then from what? From sin. From spiritual death. God loves the world in this way. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. Mm. It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Have you ever heard anything like this before? Shh. When I met Lilith, Mary, that day, I told my wife and my students that she was beyond human aid. Only God could have healed her. And then I saw her. And here you are. The healer. I, my whole life, I have wondered if I would see this day. students. In two days' time, we leave Capernaum. Come see the kingdom I am bringing into this world. But I, I, I can't have a position in the Sanhedrin. You have family. You are getting advanced in years. <laughs> I understand. But the invitation is still open. To what exactly? To lead a nomadic life? To, to give up who I am? It's true. There is a lot you would give up. But what you would gain is far greater and more lasting. Is this another one of your born again mysteries? <laughs> Mysteries aren't easy for a scholar. Think about it. Hmm? Take your time. On the morning of the fifth day, we leave and we'll meet by the well in the southern quarter. Your heart tell you. My heart is 
swollen with fear and wonder. You can tell me nothing except that I am standing on holy ground. isn't it? Amazing scene. So much truth in it. So much that even this, they brought it out to a point that the scriptures came really alive. So that you could have the sense and the feeling of what's going on. Nicodemus, in my estimation, as I've said to you before, I don't know if you're thinking about it, but I believe would have been the Paul. The Pharisee that would have followed Jesus. And I believe that then he would have been the writer to the Gentiles. Because I think God was going to use him. When you think about all of the information that's in the head of a Pharisee, all of the solical information that's usable. So as we go forward, what I want you to understand is two different things. Solical is the term that watchmen need use for just the regular functionality of the soul. Soulish is when the soul is out of line with the spirit. So, solical is one thing. Your soul supposed to function proper in alignment with God. And then God can use much of the data, much of the data you had before you were born again. And now use it to his aim, for his aim, to his good, for his purposes. But when you use it yourself, it's soulish. It's for your gain, for your independence, for your own lifestyle. And so that's the, that's the fight. And the reason why I had to first take away from you all of that data is so that you could be marismos in your mind spiritually, not trying to use that data. That data is not to be used for your own gain. It is only to be used for God's gain. So Paul, being a Pharisee of the Pharisees, all of the information and all the scripture that Paul quotes in his epistles shows you that God went back and used all that stuff. But Paul said, I count it all dumb. I count it all dumb that I might win Christ. So Paul says, I'm not going to use it for myself. God has to use it for himself. So, so anytime you see Paul using anything that he knows from his pharisaical lifestyle, it's God saying to Paul, use that and illuminate that. Because Paul clearly says to us, I'm not using it. I count it dumb that I might win Christ. You see? And that's what we've got to do. We've got to count it dumb. We've got to count it dumb. But he can use whatever he wants. So he can go back into my past if he wants to and use something out of my past. And that's fine. But it's for him. It's not for me. Now using it for my own gain, 
And it might profit me. Do you understand? It might profit me, but I'm not using it that way. I'm using it only for him. Then it becomes sanctified. Now it's brought into a sanctified life. Now all things are good and holy and righteous. And Come on, are you with me? Okay. And some of the, th some of the main things that God will use is your past hurts. He will take your past hurts and make them profitable for you and others. Okay? And that wrote an entire book out of her past hurts. By the direction of the Lord, she writes a book that tells you how to get over these hurts and what she went through in those. So now the hurt becomes fruit for God to use. Okay? Are you with me so much far? By the way, Nicodemus does not go with him as you know. He gets ever so close. And he does not go with him. But you need to download The Chosen and look at the entire season. Um, it is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. And you need to support them. Give them some money when you're on their app so that they can do this season too, which is almost ready. They're working on it, but it's almost ready and it's going to be um, phenomenal um, season two. So bless them. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Live screen. Thank you so much for being with me. Um, I love you much. Tomorrow night, same time, seven o'clock. Be here or be square. Took y'all back in the day, didn't it? All right.